In the previous part of the lecture, we spoke about why uh, you need uh, branching in order to solve uh, problems like uh, error handling for the circle calculation, or maybe for printing out uh, if the number is positive, negative, or zero. So now let's talk about Boolean data type. So Boolean data type is really the solution for uh, supporting branching. So let's see. Let's review this definition over here. Remember in the elementary programming, we already go over this definition here. So now I really, again, want to emphasize this. What's really a data type? A data, a data type is simply uh, accommodating all the possible values you can uh, store in a particular variable. For example, if you declare a variable of uh, data type integer, in that case, you can store all the, po uh, all the two to the power of 32. Uh, possible integer values into that variable at a runtime. If you actually declare uh, a variable to be of, of data type uh, character, so that means at a runtime you can only store exactly one character into that variable, like a box, right? So now what about when we have Boolean data type? So whenever you talk about a data type, you have to know what are all the possible values in that particular type. Well, all the possibility, right? In the case of integer, you got two to the uh, power of 32 possibilities. So now we need a data type. So here's a Kent's, whose values suggest either a condition holds or it does not hold. So it's like a binary situation. So we can take uh, selective actions. You can think about uh, like a branching over here. Remember over here, you can see this is what we went over previously. At this point over here, I want to take some selective action. If certain condition C holds, I will take this action over here. If certain condition does not hold, I will say not C, I'm going to take this action over here. So either holds or not holds. All right, so now let's go back here. And the Boolean data type will be the, the one. And Boolean data type is incredibly easy. It has only two literal values. You may have known that already, it's called true and false. All right, so true is a keyword in Java, and false is also a keyword in Java. You have to spell them precisely, otherwise you'll get compile time error, which you, you, don't want, you don't want to write into. All right, so you can think about the true value really corresponds to the case where some condition that we specify holds at the runtime, which means evaluates to be the case. On the other hand, if the condition does not really hold, or it does not evaluate to be the case, in that case, it would be false. So either true or false, right? If you think about binary number, you can think about false is like a number zero, and then true is like the number one, right? All right, well, we'll get more to it later. All right, all relational expressions have the Boolean type. We talked about relational operation last time, right? Remember we spoke about operations, operators versus operand, right? All the three terms. So now we talk about all the relational opera, uh, expressions, meaning that you wanna compare numbers. Whenever you do any comparison to relate uh, any two numbers, in that case, you're, it's going to return Boolean. I'll illustrate it to you. However, I want to predict what's gonna happen later, either this week or next week. So there's another category of operations or expression that will also have Boolean type result. Just make, make a note, the logical operations or logical expression, right? We talk about conjunction, disjunction. I also mentioned that in my notes last time, but we're gonna cover that either this week or next week. We'll see how the time goes. All right, let's now talk about relational expressions. So now we're gonna talk about mathematical symbol you learned from the high school, and also what's the corresponding Java operator, and then gives you some example, and then what's the result. And notice that all the result for the relational expression is gonna be either true or false, right? All right, uh, these are very easy. You can see mathematically, this is how you write less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and also equal. Notice that here, the mathematically equal sign over here, a single equal means equality. But now when we talk about programming, so all the C family language, like a C, C sharp, or Java and other languages, if they are in the C family, they also, they use an equal equal over here to denote equality, right? Just notice the difference. So whenever I use uh, equal here, I, uh, what, the context should be I, I'm using variable, ass uh, variable assignments, right? But if I really meant a single equal to be a mathematical equality, I'll be explicit. Otherwise, you can assume, since we talk about Java, single equal in Java is simply variable assignment. Don't get confused. All right, so, and here we just say less than, uh, less than and then equal over here, and also greater than equal. 
You just have to know how to type it on your from your keyboard. All right, let's see some example over here. Let's assume we have a variable r, which is currently uh, currently storing the value five. Let's assume that. Okay, if I say r less than or equal to five, I'm asking whether the value that that is stored in r is less than or equal to five. Yeah, indeed, five less than or equal to five. Mathematically, it is the case, so that will be true. And also five. Larger than or equal to five, which is also true, right? Is either is either larger than or equal to either way, right? And if you say r is equal to, right? You can see this over here is the comparison operator in Java. So here, this will also be a relational expression, right? That's uh, true as well because five is indeed equal to five, right? Very easy. Let's talk about more relational operators, right? So this will be less than mathematically, just the same in Java, just less than, and this is greater than, and also the same, and this is not equal to, right? You can see that's a very uh, beautiful symbol over here. But in Java or in ASCII key from your keyboard, you're gonna say ex uh, exclamation mark uh, followed by equal sign, right? That's how you write. Uh, it's not equal to. There is one way uh, to actually write some uh, write this alternatively by rewriting it. I'll show it to you uh, a little bit later. Let's uh, check it. Remember, R is actually storing five. So now, five being uh, five being strictly less than five is actually false, right? For sure. And also, five being uh, strictly larger than five is also false. And five not equal to itself is also false, right? Hopefully, you're fine. But later on, we're gonna see what well, if you only see these uh, expressions uh, directly, it looks very trivial and simple. I I agree. However, when we apply that in the context of certain lines of code, it might become trickier to analyze. So that's why I want to get the basic uh, clarify first. All right, next. So now let's see some rewriting over here, right? You can write x less than or equal to y. Remember mathematically for any number x and y, what can be the possible relations between them? There are only three possible relations. Either x is strictly less than y, or x is equal to y, or x is larger than y, right? You can see there are only three possibilities over there, right? If I, if you see what I mean. Whenever you talk about any numbers already here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna illustrate this example in a moment, but just remember relations between uh, two numbers. Between two numbers. Okay, so now if you got either x strictly less than that, or x is equal to y, or x is strictly larger than y, right? So these are the only three possibilities over here, right? And now, when you are saying that, I'm talking about x less than or equal to y. How can I rewrite it? So here, when I say x is uh, less than or equal to y, I'm basically talking about it's either this or this. Alternatively, I simply meant it is not the case that it is larger than. You see what I mean? So here, let me say that again. When I say x less than or equal to y, I'm basically saying either x is less than y or so here, when I say or, I just mean a little bit more informally, it's either one, right? X uh, less than y or x equals y. So I'm just using the comparison operator. So this is what it means, either this or this. So uh, 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 equ uh, equivalently, so it's equivalent to say, so it's equivalent to say, it is not the case, not the case, that the third relation is actually the case. Not the case. X larger than Y, and we remember how do you can how you can write the uh, uh, not equal to, uh, uh, and to really say not the case, right? It's uh, gonna use ex uh, exclamation mark. So this is called a logical negation. But we'll get there a little bit later. But you can learn it right away. So this simply means not. It is not the case that X larger than Y. So the conclusion is over here. X less than Y is simply equivalent to not the case x larger than y. So that's my point, all right? Let's go back there. You can see here, you can see x uh, less than or equal to y 
either the first relation or the second relation, uh, either the first relation or the second relation simply means it is not the case that the third relation uh, will actually hold. Similarly, so now you can see when you, when I say larger than y, right? So now when I say larger than y is the case. So that means the other two are not the case, right? So what what's the other two? So not the case x less than or equal to y. All right, hopefully you can see that. Right, you might know that already mathematically, but I just want to make sure you can also rewrite it, right? Okay, so now you can see uh, not the case, uh, not the case less than or equal to y is equivalent to simply larger than, all right? So what about this guy over here? So now between any two numbers is uh, either, either equal or not equal to, right? So now if I say it's actually not equal to y, so which means it is not the case that x is equal to y. All right, just another way to rewrite it. What about this? This one will be interesting. When I say x equal to y, so what will be the opposite? So that means the opposite, meaning that x is not equal to y, is not the case. All right, so this one here, let's uh, derive that uh, quickly. So now if you got x equals y, this will be equivalent to, it is not the case that x is not equal to y. Because I know that they are equal, so that means when you say they are not equal to, that should not be the case. So in order to translate this into x, uh, x, uh, x exclamation mark, I would say this. So that's uh, what they're equivalent to, all right? Let's go back here, and then we'll have this. All right, so now you might be wondering, why do I need to learn this over here at the bottom over here? You might be happy enough just to specify the one at the top. I agree with you. However, I think there will be a uh, certain logical reasoning you will have to do when you talk about uh, alternative branches for selection. That's why I want to give you this idea over here, right? You may not write uh, these guys over here uh, directly at the bottom. You may not write these. I, to be honest with you, I may not write it directly myself. However, these are very important logical form or relational form for you to understand what exactly they mean. Okay, we'll see exactly uh, how to use this. All right, so that's about the Boolean data type. And then I want to do one more example together with you quickly. So now uh, let's now consider these over here. So we, uh, we know that this is equivalent to this, right? Not equal to y is equivalent to not the case they are equal. And also when you say they are not equal to, not equal to, uh, well, again, similar. Y is not equal to z simply means it is, it is not the case they are equal, right? So now I want to evaluate, uh, just evaluate some input just to prove they are really the same, all right? Let's say this. Let's just say for X and Y, I'll leave the Y and Z uh, just as a, uh, a mental exercise for you. You can check it in your mind. So let's say X is equal to three and also Y is equal to four, all right? So now if I say X over here is three and four, three not equal to four, what would that be? three is not equal to four is simply true. It is the case that three is not equal to four, okay? So now somehow we want to say this is equivalent to this, right? So now what would that be? So X will just be three over here and also Y will just be four. And now if we only look at this particular part over here, just look at this particular part. Three equals four is not the case. So this part over here will just be false just for this part however we also say it's not the case if false is not the case so what should be the case true should be the case all right so now here is a little bit tricky over here to say uh false is not the case uh, explanation mark simply say negation false is not the case that simply tells you that implies true is the case So this example over here is again, simply tell you that if you got two uh, expression here, when you say two numbers are not equal to, it will be, uh, it will be equ uh, equivalent to say, it is not the case that they are equal. All right, and then uh, without bothering you any further, I would suggest try to convince yourself why it's not equal to Z is equivalent to not the case they are equal for these two 
uh, numbers specifically, you can try to apply the same reasoning I just did. Just try to get uh, used to it, right? We're going to need this later when we talk about different ways to really do error handling for, uh, for example, the circle motivating problem. All right, so that's about the uh, uh, Boolean data type. And then the next topic would be we want to introduce to you the if statement syntax and also semantics.